So how much cold hard cash do you actually need in your hands to be able to get yourself into a house? That's what we're gonna be covering off in our Just Ask Tim video series today. It was prompted by one of our followers, Amina, sent through a question expressing concerns about all the changes to finance and how that would leave her sitting from her deposit option. So we're gonna be covering off that exactly in today's video. Before we kick it off, guys, let me introduce myself. My name is Tim Guest. I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the founder of Infinite Wealth. I've trained over 18,000 people how to reach their financial goals, whether it be things like home ownership, travel and lifestyle, or early retirement. We do it using only what people currently have available to them right now, and we do it with very high customer satisfaction ratings. Welcome to our Just Ask Tim video series, where I could be answering your question live. Yeah, if you want to get a question answered, please send it through to one of our social media platforms at, at Infinite Wealth AU or at Tim Guest AU, and someone will be sure to get back to you, and I could be even answering your question live like I am with Amina today. Now, of course, if you're a first-time tuning in or you're a long time follower, welcome along. Guys, this video series would not be possible if it wasn't for you guys. The only thing we ask, we love to see your interaction with these posts, so please like, love, angry, comment, question. If you wanna get your own questions, send that through as well, uh, and uh, and we could be getting along to your question. And the only thing that I ask personally, guys, is that you share these videos with your friends and family. Uh, it does take a bit of time and a bit of effort to put these videos together, um, so it keeps me inspired to keep doing them for you guys, and of course, it also gives your friends and family the benefit of this very valuable information. So let's get into it. Let's now talk about the deposit options available for people looking to get into a home. There's a few different things that we need to consider here and, and probably the real, I guess we could probably break it down into the three separate layers. So there are no deposit options available. I'm going to warn you about them in a minute though. There's also low deposit options available and then we've got our standard kind of 5 to 10% deposit options available which most people are familiar but I will break down a couple of things for you regarding that as well. So guys look, in terms of no deposit options you may see some of these out there. They're very often advertised by building companies, um, you know, basically saying that you can get into our own home with no money down. Um, look, th there's two ways. Th these primarily are a marketing tool that these companies use. So be aware. They use them so, to be able to, so, you know, to attract inquiry. People call up inquiring about these no deposit loans. They typically won't go through too many details with you over the phone. They'll just ask a few questions. If they know that they can help you, they'll organise an appointment, they'll get you in, and then they'll effectively try and move you off down some other path. Um, so I'm not going to cover off that too much. Primarily how these no deposit options work is two prim uh, two. Uh, two main ways. So the firstly is a full no deposit loan, but then typically what the bank does will charge you a very high interest rate. So there is one of those that are available right now where they're charging 6.5% interest rate. Uh, I mean, that's almost double what most people are paying on a mortgage now. I mean, of course, if you've got no deposit, it's a good way in, but there are probably better options out here. So, so really, I would be very wary in staying away from those no deposit options. Okay, low deposit options. This is primarily, and I am talking to our Perth audience here, um, there's a government institution called Keystart, which does specialise in helping Australians. They've got to meet certain criteria, but get into a home with a 2% deposit loan. Now, there's also some other things we've got to take into consideration here because there's the first homeowner's grant and the stamp duty concessions that come along with that. So I'll break this down into whether we're talking about low deposit options with first home buyers or low deposit option with someone who has already owned a home previously. So um, if you're looking to build a new home, because the first homeowner's grant in Western Australia is $10,000 and you can use this $10,000 towards the deposit and costs um, with a bank loan. So 2% deposit, let's say we're talking a $400,000 home, you're talking an $8,000 loan, probably need to allow around about $4,000 worth of fees there for stamp duty rates and taxes, things like that, bank fees as well. Uh, but essentially you're talking around about you know, probably around about that $12,000, uh, take off the $10,000 that you get as the first homeowner's grant, you probably only need to come up with around about $2,000. So look, and typically even with the no deposit options as well, even though the bank may require no deposit, if you're gonna be buying a house, uh, you normally need to put it at least some deposit down when you're signing that offer and acceptance. So two grand, it's effectively like a no deposit loan anyway. So that's for first home buyers looking to build in Western Australia securing the first homeowner's grant. If you're a first home buyer that wants to buy an established home, there is no first homeowner's grant aren't currently. Um, there are still stamp duty concessions though. Um, but if you're looking at buying an established home of around about the $400,000 mark, um, you, it's still basically that eight, eight grand for the 2% deposit, $4,000 for some fees, $12,000, but you don't get a first homeowner's grant. So you've got to come up with that 12 grand. So 
Um, first home buyer established, you need around about that $12,000 mark. If you're someone who's already owned a home before and you're still looking to take advantage of these low deposit options, then essentially you just can't take advantage of the grant. So if you're building, once again, we said you need that 2% deposit, eight grand plus your fees, around about $12,000. Um, uh, uh, and then what you've got to consider is things like stamp duty. So if you are building, probably need to add around about five, six thousand dollars on. So you're talking seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars to get into a second home. Um, or if you're looking at buying established, this the stamp duty is going to be significantly more. Stamp duty is probably going to be more like about fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars rather than five or six. So now what it means, even with a low deposit option, is you're probably talking around about that twenty-seven thousand dollar mark to get. Uh, into a, uh, an established home. But there's still the low deposit options. Then what we've also still got is traditionally, and, and look, I know that there are, some people think that the 5% to percent deposit loans have disappeared. So this was due to APRA. So APRA put a whole bunch of restrictions trying to slow the Sydney and Melbourne market down a few years back. One of these restrictions did relate to high LVR loans. Um, when they're talking about a high LVR loan, what it means is a low deposit loan. So a lot of these low deposit loans did disappear off the market. However, since these restrictions have been removed, a lot of banks are still allowing people to get into a home with around about a 5% deposit. Now, there are some minor changes. You know, it might be a 5% deposit or a 6% deposit, but it also depends on how they're going to calculate things like lenders, mortgage insurance. But forget all that stuff. What does it actually mean in terms of cash? What are you actually going to need? Well, if you're someone who's looking at um, buying or building an established home uh, and you don't have any first homeowners grant, you're looking at uh, not going through the low deposit option, you're probably gonna need around about $30,000 as a minimum. So it does start to step up, but they're established, it's gonna be more because there's significantly more in terms of this, uh, the um, uh, stamp duty. So you might be talking around about $40,000 or $45,000 in terms of the established. So let me just run through it again, just very, very quickly, break it down. No deposit loans, you don't need any money, but stay away from them because they're either um, financing the deposit and then going and getting a loan or they're giving you high interest rates. So that's something to be mindful of and stay away from. Low deposit loans, key start in Western Australia. Um, you could probably get in with just a couple of grand if you're a first home buyer. Um, if you're a second home buyer, you probably need a minimum of around about that seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars to move. And if you're looking at the kind of traditional five, ten percent deposit options, well, minimum you might need is around about the thirty or forty thousand dollars, depending on whether you're looking at building or established and up, and you can secure those options there. All right, guys. So look, that pretty much covers it off for our Just Ask Tim video series this week. Couple of things before I go. Uh, look, we want to see more of your questions come through, guys. So if there's something you want me to talk about in more detail, uh, please send that through. Of course, we'd love to see your interaction with these post as well so please like love angry comment question tell us what you think tell us how you feel and the final thing guys is that please uh, um, you know the only thing that we ask in return for sharing this valuable information with you is that you share it with your friends and family on your social media platforms so if you click share whatever uh, platform you're watching it on that'll be a real great benefit for us and it'll keep us doing these videos and delivering outstanding value to you guys guys that's it for me for our just ask tim video series i'll be coming at you on thursday with our week in real estate the week in real the wire uh, where you can get all the top stories happening from the week in finance, real estate, and investment. Stay tuned for that, and I'll look forward to speaking to you soon. See ya.